I don't know how it recently popped up into my video feed but I enjoy it. It reminded me of my teenage. But why I am telling you this? Because we are going to create this bitmap effect and turn this image into something like this. Hello everyone, it's Didi. Welcome again to Dexplorian. For those who are new here, let me tell you, this channel is all about designing in Photoshop and sharing the process with you. And along with that, we explore various tools, techniques and tips and tricks which will improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. I don't think I need to tell you what bitmap is and if you are 80s or 90s kid then I can surely say we are much more familiar with it than the Gen Z's and the Millennials. And the reason for that is Super Mario and Contra like games. I'm talking about the days way before the PCs where video game cassettes were a thing and it was inserted in the console and then connected to old big CRT TVs and then the controllers were connected via wires. After that growing up you also got the chance of using the old Nokia phones which are now can be seen in the memes. So I thought why not recreate this effect and use it in our designs and I think it's kind of looks cool. So without wasting any more time let's get started. This time we will not be creating the canvas of our choice at the starting rather we will do it later. Instead we are gonna simply drag and drop the image we are going to use on the Photoshop home and it will open in a canvas with the same dimensions of the image. I got this image from the website called Lumi.ai. I came to know about this website very recently and now it has become one of my go-to websites for stock images. The images here are AI generated, created and curated by different AI artists and the best part is the website is regularly updated with new images. All the images are free and can be used personally as well as commercially. So I would suggest just give it a try and for this image you can go to the description and find the download link. To create the bitmap effect and achieve the best results, the thing you should be looking for in an image is the contrast. More the contrast, the better it is. Our image has got a good amount of contrast. If your image lacks the contrast, we can boost that up and I will show you that a little later. First we have to convert our image into grayscale and for that we have to go to image, then mode and click on grayscale. This will ask us to allow discarding the color informations in the image. We will allow that by clicking OK and our image is now black and white. If you can notice with the colors we have also lost some contrast from the image. We will have to boost that and we can do that by applying a curves adjustment layer on top of the image and make an S curve like this to give it some contrast. But we have a better way of doing that. We will turn off the visibility of the curves layer and then go to filter and click on camera raw filter. A new window will open and we'll play with these sliders to make some adjustments to our image. Let's increase the exposure. Of course we're gonna increase the contrast. We'll brighten the highlights a little. Make the shadows a little darker and adjust the amounts of blacks and whites in the image. I'm satisfied. If you are not, no one is going to stop you. Carry on with the process till you are satisfied. We can also turn back on the curves adjustment layer and make some small changes to the curve to enhance it more. It's looking great now. What do you say? We'll select both the layers and press Ctrl or Command E to merge them together into a single layer and rename it as subject. Now our image is ready for the bitmap effect to be applied. But before that I want to show you something and this is important. We'll go to image and click on image size. Have a look at the dimensions and the resolution. It's quite big and the resolution is also good. Keep a note of the resolution value because we are gonna need it later. We don't need to change anything now so we'll cancel it and again go to image then mode and this time click on bitmap. It will ask us to flatten the image. Confirm it by clicking ok. And now in the dialog box we have to play with this output value here. Here in this drop down make sure the halftone screen is selected. Now let's start by changing the output value to 20. In here we don't need to change anything except the shape which should be set to cross. You can experiment with other shape options if you want. We'll simply hit ok and this is our bitmap. But I see too much of details and the pixel squares are also very small. It kinds of look the same as the image itself. This is not what we want. Actually this is more of a trial and error and you have to redo the process a couple of times to achieve the result. So we'll press Ctrl or Command Z to undo and again change our image to bitmap and this time 
set the output value to a lower number say 10 and now it looks much better isn't it and in the same way you can also make me feel better by liking this video i can't explain in words how i feel when i see someone liking the videos it's really an amazing feeling of being able to help someone and my videos are of some help to someone and if you are interested in similar kind of contents then i would request you to subscribe the channel and do not forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever i post a new video we are not done yet we have few more steps to achieve the final results We'll again go back to the image size and now if you see the dimensions and the resolution of our image has been drastically reduced. It's tiny if you compare it with the original image. Now we have to change back the resolution to the original which is 72 if you remember. But since our image is a bitmap now we can't do anything with it. Means we can't resize it, can't apply any effect or filters, nothing. So what we'll do is again go back to the image menu then mode and convert it into a grayscale and again go to the mode and this time convert it into RGB and now our image is fully editable. Now we'll create our main canvas and for that we will click on the home button and click on create new and create the canvas of our choice. I'll be creating my usual A4 size canvas and then bring in the image layer we created and drop onto the canvas. I'll rename it as subject1 and leave it like this for the time being. Come back to the original canvas and create another bitmap image with a slightly different output value so that the image becomes a little more less detailed and with bigger pixel boxes. For that we have to go back to the state where we haven't turned it into a bitmap and we can locate that state here on the history panel. If you are unable to see this in your workspace, you can go to window and click on history to turn on the panel. It might appear like this at first, you can simply drag it to place it like this. And now we click on the state where we want to go and we are there. We have to repeat the whole process once again to convert it into a bitmap and this time I will set the output value to 7. Our image has gone even smaller and now you know how to make it bigger. But before hitting OK, this time we are gonna change this option here and click on nearest neighbor and then hit OK. And now you see the pixels are bigger than our earlier bitmap. It's locked. We have to first turn it into a grayscale and then to RGB. And then we are gonna drag and drop it onto our main canvas as we did earlier. We'll align both the layers, rename this layer as subject 2, select both of them and link them together. We no longer need this canvas so we'll give it a proper closure and move on without saving it as we did with our excess. We'll then add a solid color adjustment layer, make it black or dark grayish. It will serve as our background. Then we'll add a layer mask to the subject 2 layer and take the brush tool. Make sure the foreground color is black. Right click anywhere on the canvas to open the brush settings and select the soft round brush. If needed adjust the brush size by pressing the left or right square bracket keys and paint over the eyes or ear areas to hide the larger pixels and reveal the smaller ones from the layer beneath. It will add some details in those areas. I think hard round brush will be better for this task because we don't want any soft edges. We can also do it in the hair areas or any other place you feel like. I'm done and now we'll select both these layers by holding the shift key and convert them into a smart object. And in the next step we're gonna do some refinements to make it fit into our poster. We'll start off by creating a layer mask to the subject layer and again take the brush tool. Hard round brush is already selected. Foreground color should be black. We'll adjust the brush size and start masking out the extra areas like this. If you have to bring back some parts, just change the foreground color to white by pressing the X key and paint over the areas. It's done and now I'll be doing something which is purely for aesthetic purpose and if you want you can skip this part, it's totally fine. For that I will change the foreground color to white and make the brush smaller just about the size of the pixel blocks and start revealing in the form of lines. 
And if you are wondering how am I doing this perfectly straight, it's easy. We have to click at a point and hold the shift key and move the brush in any direction we like and it will move in a straight line. That's it. I am happy with the results, so I will go back to the move tool and now resize it as per our choice and place it here. It's already looking good, isn't it? But I will take it a little further, we will add a gradient map over this. Click here to open the gradient editor and change the colors of the gradient as per our preference. Hopefully by now I am sure you know how to work with the gradients. So I will be speeding up the video to save some time. But if you are not familiar with this technique then I would suggest you to watch this video. You can find it by clicking on the i button above and the link of the same will be given in the description. In that I have discussed the gradient map in details. And if you want to use the same colors I am using then pause the video, note down the color codes and type it in the box down there in the color picker dialog box. I will refine it a little more. And we are done. And in the next step we are gonna add some text and in that I have done something interesting. Let me show you. Actually I wanted something different this time so I am going to add a word in Japanese. But do I know Japanese? Of course not. So I thought of a walk around. What I did is opened up Google and typed the word which is pain in Japanese and I got this. I simply copied it and went onto the canvas and activated the text tool and click anywhere on the canvas and then pasted it. And it worked. And it worked because we already have Japanese fonts installed in the Photoshop itself. Then I made a copy of it by holding the Alt or Option key and clicking and dragging and then double click to edit them one by one. We'll place them just above the background layer. Now we double click here on the blank space of the first text layer to open the layer style dialog box and click on strokes. To make the stroke effect visible we have to bring down the fill opacity to 0. Now we go to stroke, select the fill type as gradient and change the colors of the gradient. I have already done mine. You can play with the opacity. Stroke size I have kept to 6. You can change it if you want. Position is set to outside. And if you want you can change the angle of the gradient, mine is 180 degrees. And now we are gonna apply the same effect to the second text layer and we have a trick for that. We will hold the Alt or Option key and click and drag the effect here and drop it onto the second text layer and done. But nothing changed, right? We have to double click on the stroke of the second subject layer here and in the layer styles we have to bring down the fill opacity. That's it. Lastly we are gonna add the message of the poster. Did you notice that? As we are clicking on the canvas to add the new text, the existing text layer is getting activated. This is because our existing texts are very big in size. To solve this problem, we will select the existing text and the background layers and press Ctrl or Command E to merge them into a single layer. And now if we click on the canvas to add the new text, it's working. Let me just quickly add the text. And our poster is complete. I hope you like the effect we just created and above all enjoyed the process of creating it and I hope it will help you in creating your own art. And if you are ready to play with the pixels further then this video can make that happen.